I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demands for our daily bread? Join me in faith right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now, even as I demand my daily bread, it is coming to me from you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I receive all that I need today. Amen. Praise God. Wow. Now, I know we've been touching some sensitive things, but I owe you the truth. Now, if you have any we've been sharing about and you feel, oh, uh, Pastor, I need to talk to you specially concerning this, feel free to contact us and we will see how we can get that to work for you. Praise God. Don't, don't just sit down there and say, oh, I don't agree. I don't agree. Okay, if you don't agree, okay, what do you do? Sit down there and say, I don't, I don't agree. Okay, what do you know that is different? Praise <laughs> God. What do you know that is different? So give us a call. Send us a message. You know, and say, look, um, concerning this matter, please, I, I need further clarification or I need, because, you know, most times we can't even share everything here. Praise God, because of time and then the focus of what we're dealing with. Because when you take on a matter, there are many sides that the Spirit of God can bring. So I, I, I make that open to you. If there's a challenge, you, you feel, I need more clarification, send us a, a message. Call our number, and our number is on the screen. Just, just, just get that sorted out. Praise God. All these things is to help you. No one, God will not send a message to condemn you. See? The purpose of this thing, now God's judgment is never to condemn you. Never. Never. It's to help you. You know, I was sharing with someone recently and I said, listen, if God wants to destroy a man, he won't send anyone. Ah, no, nah, no, nah, he won't send anyone. If God wants to destroy a man, no one will be sent to that man. Sudden destruction will just come to that man and he is gone. So if God sends a warning to you, even though you have done wrong, his intention is not to destroy you. And that's the truth. And that's one thing you need to understand about God. He's such a loving God. You, you, you remember Jonah, when God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach to that city and tell them to repent. If not, judgment is going to come on them. Now, this was the reason Jonah was unwilling to go. Because Jonah understood, Jonah loved God. He, he was a man of God. He loved God. He knew God. I, I know Jonah knew God. Believe me, he, that guy understood the personality of God. He knew God so much. But you know, no matter how you know God, there are aspects of him that will continuously be revealed to you. Praise God. So why was Jonah running away from going to Nineveh? Because Jonah felt... For God to tell me to go and warn them, it means he's not planning to destroy them. He knew. So Jonah knew. He, he, he considered the message he was sent to preach. And he knew that if I preach this man, now that's like going to ravage the whole town. You know, say, hey, repent. If not, God's going to destroy this city. And Jonah knew that even if it's one person that shows, shows remorse, God's going to say, mm, somebody has repented. I won't destroy it. He knew. So Jonah knew that this journey to him will be a waste of time. So Lord, listen. If you want to destroy them, destroy them. If you don't want to destroy them, just leave them. My preaching, mm. <laughs> I'm going to stress myself. Go there. They will see me as a false prophet because everything I say will not come to pass because somebody must repent. Because, why, how did Jonah know that, know that someone will repent? Because for God to send him to take one in there, it means there are people God is looking at. And those people God has his eyes on are the ones that will repent. 
And by their repentance, the city will be saved. So Jonah knew. That's why he refused to go. Now, when you read the book of Jonah, you see that after Jonah had finished preaching, he went back. I you know, was waiting to see. Okay, God, oh yeah, action time. And God had to teach him and said, that's not how we do things. Can't you see? You think I would want to destroy them? He said, but I knew. That's what I said. I knew this was what I was saying when I was in my country. This was exactly what I was saying. Read the book of Jonah. So when, when, once God sends a warning to you, no matter what you have done, if God sends a warning to you and says repent, then you better repent. Because number one, God, had, God has no intention of destroying you. Don't hear the word repent and say, hey, what can I do? What can I do? You see, that attitude is what's going to bring the destruction, just like Eli did. When the man of God came to him and told him, this is what the Lord has said, he had the opportunity to change it. And all he needed to do was bring repentance. Call his sons and his daughters, call his children together and say, hey guys, sit down here. I'm going to take action against you if you don't change. I'm taking you off this temple. You, you, you must not come near this temple. Hey, do you know his sons would have been saved? But he heard the word of the Lord. And he said, what can I do? I'm an old man. See that? And that's what I was telling you yesterday. The challenge is not the mistakes you make. The challenge is not the wrongs you do. The challenge is will you, at the time that you're supposed to repent, be able to bring forth repentance before the Lord? Now you compare Sodom, you, you compare Nineveh and Sodom and Gomorrah. God never sent any warning to Sodom and Gomorrah. He just went straight and destroyed the place. The reason is because there was not a reason to save the city. So what God did, quietly pulled out the one he wanted to save from that city and destroyed the whole city. When he was talking to Abraham, he wasn't sending Abraham to go preach to them. He was just talking to Abraham as his friend. Say, look, Abraham, Sodom, this is where I'm actually going. I'm going to destroy it. Because the sin is too great. I'm going to destroy it. And Abraham tried to intercede as a friend. Now, now that's why, uh, listen, in your walk with God, now we're all children of God, understand that. But you see, it's another level to grow to and come and become a friend of God. You now, sometimes people argue which is closer, sons or friends. In relationship, in, when I'm in relationship, in relating, friends are deeper than brothers. You should know that by now. There are friends you can easily, some, there are friends, there are even some friends that have deeper secrets about if they are, they are friends than their spouses. Yeah. Now your spouse is supposed to be your friend. That's how it's supposed to be. But then when it comes to siblings and friends, sometimes, that's why even siblings, they grow to become friends. Now these are things you must understand. Because there is something friendship does. Friendship makes you vulnerable. Yeah. So you as a child of God, you must desire and grow to that point where you are, you can now say you're a friend with you are friends with God. Because what does that mean? Now, not just that you say, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of Jesus said, Hey, I call you friends. Yes, but in reality, you want him to relate with you as a friend. And most times, when God relates with you as a friend, how do you know God relates with you as a friend? By the kind of things he begins to share with you. Oh, when you're his friend, he shares deep things. Because cause he becomes vulnerable with you. Can God be vulnerable? <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Just grow in him. So God came to Abraham and said, hey, Abraham, this is what I want to do. He shared with Abraham as his friend. And Abraham, now when he shares those things with you, he's not expecting to say, hmm, hmm, Rema, 
Rema, I come and get out from there. Where is God? <laughs> Just, that's not it. That's not it. When he shares things like that with you, he is expecting you to communicate with him as a friend. At that time, he's not looking for a servant master relationship, he's looking for a friend. Maybe there's something I'm missing out. I need someone to point it out to me. That's what he's doing. Just like he did to Moses. He told Moses, Moses, look, I want to destroy all these people. Just, just step aside. So this is what I'm going to do. I'll destroy them. Then I'll start a new generation from you. Now Moses would have said, you pee. Now, guess what? That would have wiped out Abraham. <laughs> the blessing of Abraham. So, but Moses did something striking. He said, Lord, I know you're angry, but you're not thinking properly right now. How can you say God is not thinking? Watch. He said, listen, if you do this that you're intending to do, what would the Egyptians, the Egyptians say? They will say you, after showing so much strength, brought them out of Egypt, took them into the wilderness, and then you realize you didn't have any plan for them. And because you didn't have plans for them, you decided to destroy them. Is that how you want to be seen? And God said, yeah, Moses, you're right. And Moses was bold enough to say, Lord, you have to repent of this evil that you have thought to do. And the Bible said, and God repented. That's a friend. That's a friend. And, and in our place of relating with God, we must come to that place where we can relate with God like that. Now, there are things, you know, Sometimes, by the grace of God, we, you know, our function in the prophetic ministry, I know. Now, I enter into that place by my friendship with the Lord. Not as a prophet being sent. I understand my calling. So I know where I operate. So, because of that friendship, there are things that God will reveal to me is about to happen. And now I know he's not revealing those things to me to go announce it and say, hey guys, something is about to happen. This was there and now look like a prophet when it happens. I know the reason he's telling me that he's speaking to me as his friend. I know I'm a friend of God. I know. And so I say, Lord, okay. How do we deal with this? Because I know this is not what you want to do. I know there are issues you want to cob. I know there are issues, but then think about it. This person and this person and this person is involved. So how do we deal with it? Now, see, how do we explain these things now? You see, when you're dealing with the Lord, Holy Spirit, help me. See, explaining the Godhead is one of the toughest things to do. Because you're talking to people, most, mostly, who need to still grow up. Let me just say what happens. If you catch it, you catch it. So you're talking with the Lord, and He's the Lord. He's telling you, this is what I'm going to do. Then also, you have the one who's a counselor. And that one, uh, it's still the same Lord. It's still the same God you're dealing with. Now, that one gives you wisdom on how to talk to the Lord. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So he tells you, hey, it's like someone giving you expo. Hey, approach it like this. So you go, okay, Lord, um, can we approach? Now, there, are, there are issues that have, you know, sometimes except those that are very close to me and I share these things with them. I say, look, this is, what's, this is what's going to happen or this is what's supposed to happen. But this is what the Lord is saying we should do. If we do this, it will not happen. And then we don't come out public because I, the last thing I want to do is to sound like a panic preacher. Say that now. If it can be handled, then let's handle it quietly. If it's something that cannot be handled, then, then why do you even tell it? Keep your mouth shut. Why? Because you tell it, it happens. Then you risk their blood being on your head. 
because you wanted to sound like a prophet that saw something before it happened. If that thing is evil, you risk their blood being on your head because you said it. You see, these are the things people don't understand, that the earth itself, the earth itself will look for you because you're the one that said it. By your prophecy, now even if God, you know the Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. And because sometimes people don't understand these things, they are quick to appear as a prophet. There are things God will say to you. You will fast, you will pray. And you're not fasting and praying. You know, I remember a certain situation and the Lord had warned me about a particular, he's a politician. I had seen many years, even before this person joined politics. The Lord had shown me that if this person joins politics, he's going to die. They're going to kill him. Now, I did not know who this person was. But the Lord gave me the name. And when I realized that name really existed, I realized the person was not a poly. I said, oh, good, I'm fine. But many years later, I'm talking about something of like nine years. From 10 years, Intel. And the person joined policies. Oh, dear Lord. I, I, I had to find a way to get to this person and i did and i sent him and said don't go there because that's not the will of god for you and the person was bold enough to tell me that look that's your business this is what i'm going to do and if it's to die i'm ready to die ah 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 now you're trying to save someone based on what you have seen about 10 years ago and you're trying to save the person and the person is telling you, I'm ready to die. Ah, now I had to go before the Lord on another level of intercession. Now you see, because at that point you can get offended and say, well, I have won the person. He refused to take heed. But I had to go on another level of intercession, trusting the Holy Spirit to guide me. Because I took a stand. I said, Lord, the facts that we saw this thing 10 years ago. It must not happen. I don't, now that, that, I don't want to see this thing come to pass. Not before my eyes. And I'm not ready to go before this. Because you have to come intelligently before the Lord. And I began to pray. I began to pray. I began to pray. Oh, I prayed for that man like nothing. Now I wasn't doing it because of him. I didn't know him. He wasn't my friend. And even after I warned him that time, we, we never communicated again. But I was before the Lord. I said, Lord, I will not witness this thing happen. So you've got to act. You've got to do something. I employ every wisdom from above to get this thing sorted out, to stop this man. And one day, the court ruled and disqualified all of them from contesting that election. And that's what happened. Nah, nah, he wouldn't understand. He, he would just say, oh, these politicians. They, he wouldn't understand. See that now? Now, you don't even have to explain all these things to people. You stand before your father, who is the Lord, as righteous. And he honors you because of those things that you do with him and for him. He loves it. Oh, he loves it. God loves it. He said, come, let us reason to it. Now, the work of an intercessor is this. Reasoning it out with God. It's not even by appearing as an intercessor. Ah, it's me that prayed. No, 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 no. That's why we won't tell you the details of this one I'm telling you. Our time is up. Praise <laughs> God. Woo! Glory. Lord, have mercy on your children today. There are deep issues about their lives that they need help about, Lord. 
I ask today that you intervene and bring deliverance by bringing knowledge today and raise men and women who will stand in the gap in Jesus name Amen I'll see you tomorrow God bless you bye bye